Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Solar. So today we're going to be checking out Watt Cycle's brand new server rack battery. This is their Gen 2 version of their server rack battery and this thing is loaded with features. It has almost every option that you would want in a server rack battery, but yet it's at a budget price. Right now, like for Christmas, they're running a Christmas sale and this is on sale for like $700. Like that is some of the lowest prices that you'll find on these budget batteries. And this has almost everything you're looking for. So we'll go ahead, we'll look at all the features of the batteries. We will open it up. We will look at the build quality on the inside. I'll share some of my testing data with you. And then we're gonna take these two batteries. We're gonna build a battery bank and we're gonna get it all connected up to an inverter and test them out. So as we look at the front of the battery, you can see we got two negative terminals on the left, two positive terminals on the right. Got a nice LCD screen here in the middle. It is a touch screen. Uh, below that, you have your power button. To the left, we have our communication ports. And to the right, we have a 125 amp breaker. So it is doubly protected. You, you're protected by the breaker. You're also protected by the 100 amp battery management system. And that BMS also has active balancing, which you don't see very often in these smaller server rack batteries. It can actively balance the cells at a maximum of three amps. But it also has passive balancing also. I believe you can turn the active balancing off if you don't want to use it. The BMS also has Bluetooth communication so that you can use the Watt Cycle app. And then you can get in here and there's actually some additional settings that you can change through the app. So there's probably only two features that this battery is missing. Uh, one would be self-heating, being able to keep itself warm in a cold environment. Uh, this doesn't have that. It's made to go inside of a climate-controlled space like what we're in today. And then it also doesn't have Wi-Fi. Some of these newer batteries have a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, this only has the Bluetooth. Those are the only two, I guess, major features that I see that this is missing. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll power this up. And hopefully you guys can see the screen. So on the home screen, you have six different menus you can choose from. Uh, the top one is the pack information, and this is just gonna, right now, since it's not connected to another battery, it's only showing information for this battery. Uh, back button's up in this corner. We also have the cell information, and then this is all your individual cell uh, voltages. We have an alarm screen, which there is none. So up here, this is a chart. It's, it's really just a graph. I believe this is gonna show charging and discharging over time. And then you have the settings menu right here. And this is to set up CAN bus communication. So we're gonna look at this. So the, the first choice, what's on here right now, this is um, PY for pylon. I believe that's Mega Revo and that's DAI. They must all have the same communication protocol. You have Victron, Goodwe, you can swipe up. See if I can do it, swipe up. A401, I'm not sure what that one is. Jinlong, Sorotech, Sofar, Solax, PV1800F, not sure what that one is. Stutter, SMA, INVT, GrowWatt, TBBSAJ, and that's it for the CAN bus settings. And then you could go over here and select RS45 instead. And over here you have Pylon, GrowWatt, Voltronic, Pace, AVG, and Tentec 01. I'm not sure what some of these are. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it back to Pylon Communication. Now when I look at the communication settings in here, there's a few inverters I, I don't see clearly listed in here. And if you look at their website, this battery is supposed to communicate up to like 18 different brands. I'll put a, a graphic up here that's exactly off of their website. And all of these brands, this should be able to communicate to through RS-485 or through CAN bus. But then some of these I just don't, I don't see clearly. Like I don't find Lux Power in here. I don't find Solark or Solus. Um, and then there's some in here that are very clear, like Goodwe. Um, Victron, Sofar, SMA. I mean, there's several in here that are very clear. You know, that's the exact setting for that inverter. So if, if you don't see your inverter listed on here clearly, I would definitely call tech support and ask them what the proper setting is for this to communicate to that inverter. Now for us, we're gonna be wiring this up to the SunPower Gold inverter. 
and I have this inverter set to pylon communication. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is set to pylon and we should be good. Now we'll go ahead and we will open this up and check out the build quality. Now these server rack batteries, they're 51.2 volt, which is a nominal 48 volt battery. And these have 100 amp hours of battery storage in them. So I did end up doing a capacity test and I used my CBA5 computerized battery analyzer. And the first time I tested this battery, it ended up not getting to 100. It only measured 99.012 amp hours. So I did recharge the battery and then I let it sit on the charger a little bit longer. I let it go through the active balancing. And then I tested the battery again and it came out to be 101.86 amp hours. So on the second test, it did pass the capacity test. Uh, this battery, I tested it and it came out to 101.3 amp hours. So both batteries, I did get to pass the capacity test. Um, I did have to just let it actively balance everything first uh, to be able to get them to, to reach that amount. Go ahead and open this up. Go ahead and remove this cover. So this is my first time looking inside this battery. And the first thing that struck me is how these batteries completely fill the space. They go all the way out to the edges. There's no, there's no like air gap around them. So as we look at these cells along the very back, you can see they come up right to this sheet metal. So if you would happen to accidentally drop it on the back of this, you could dent the sheet metal and then dent directly into the battery. I, I think that, I mean, to me, I don't think the battery should be necessarily that close to the back. You would want it spaced out a little bit. Now, if you look along the side, there's actually like a half inch piece of like square tube is what it looks like. And it spaces the batteries out from the sheet metal and there's probably a void in this area. So if you dented this side, you wouldn't directly hit the batteries. And uh, of course this is more added reinforcement as well on the sides. So here in the front, you have the battery management system. Everything's connected with little bus bars. So you got a bus bar coming off the negative going to the battery management system and then over to the terminals. It's got bus bars going to the breaker and to the terminals. Now, if we look at all the connectors on the battery management system, I don't see any of these glued in place. Um, if I try to wiggle on these, they don't, they don't come out easily. Um, but normally a lot of these companies are gluing these now so that they don't accidentally, I did pop that one out a little bit, uh, so that uh, they don't accidentally come undone during chipping. And then the wires from these connectors go through heat shrink and then these heat shrinked cables, these all bundle together and they're wrapped and then they go out and fan out and, and land on each one of these battery cells for your voltage readings and for your active balancing. Now, as I look at it from this side, um, these connectors here on the BMS, they weren't glued in place, but the ones up here on the on off button, the one for the LCD display, and then one of the connectors here for the communication ports, they are glued in place. So on the overall build quality, my first impressions are, um, I don't really like the batteries right along the back of the case. If they could do the same kind of tubing along the side, put it along the back, I think it would make the back more structural, a little bit stronger. It also give a gap between it and the batteries. So if you did drop it and dent it, less chance of maybe damaging a cell. And the other thing I might question is it does have bus bars and I think that that's, that's a positive thing because there's a lot of these budget batteries where they just run two or four wires in here between the connections. And I, I do like the bus bars. The only thing I would question is they do look a little bit smaller than what I'm used to seeing in these types of batteries. Other than that, I think that everything looks really good. All the little bus bars between the cells are all laser welded. All of your your voltage sensing leads, your active balancing leads here, they all have uh, the wires ran nice and neat through here. Everything looks well organized. Uh, for a budget battery, you know, for a $700 server rack battery, this actually looks really good. So this is the way the server rack battery comes right out of the box. We do have a few uh, things that we need to assemble on here. So it comes with these uh, mounting brackets that go on the side mounted in the server rack cabinet. You've got some of these handles and then they mount to the mounting brackets. It also comes with a couple short battery cables. These look to be four gauge, and that is to connect between the batteries. Comes with a battery communication cable to communicate between the batteries. 
and then it comes with these battery covers to cover up the terminals. So our mounting bracket has four holes in it and they line up with these four holes and there's screws in these first two. So we just gotta take these screws out and then we'll put our screws back in with the bracket. And then there's two additional screws that came with it for each side. And then I'm gonna put the handle on. And I put it on so that it folds inward. Hopefully that's right. So now I'm gonna start building out the battery bank. And um, you'd have to have some kind of shelf or racking system to be able to mount these on. For me, I'm just gonna put it on this cart for now. First step is going to be to ground the batteries. It does come with a little ground wire long enough to go in between batteries. And then I've got this longer ground cable that I can run from here up to the ground. We're going to take our battery cables and we'll connect both batteries together. So now I'll go ahead and take our battery communication cable. I'll go from link out in this one to link in on this one. And then I'll take the ethernet cable from the inverter and we'll connect this to the CAN bus RS-485 port. So now that we've got both batteries all wired together, we've essentially built a small battery bank and now we need to connect it to the inverter. And to do that, we're going to have to buy our own battery cables or supply them. So I've got a couple one aught cables here, and we'll get the positive and negative connected up to the positive and negative on the inverter. And then I think we've got all the wiring complete. So I'm going to go ahead and power up both batteries and turn on their breakers. And we'll see if that turns on the inverter. Yep, the lights are coming on, powering up off the batteries. The inverter's all booted up now and it is outputting power and it can see that the battery is 100% state of charge, which is um, something that it couldn't know for sure unless it has communication. So the communication is working. Now the question is, is the communication working between both batteries? So if I go to this pack information, it is showing information for this battery. It says we're address one in between these two arrows. So if I click forward or backwards, it doesn't seem to see any other batteries. So I had a feeling that these two wouldn't communicate because when I was messing with the WattCycle app, I saw a setting in here that I think we need to change. So I'll have the screen up here so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm just going to go into guest mode and then I'm just going to click guest mode there. And then it is showing me what batteries. There they are, two batteries that I can communicate to. I will pick the first one. So it takes a couple seconds for the app to update, but you can see it shows the battery is 100% state of charge. You can see the overall voltage. You can see the, the wattage, amperage. You can see the temperature. And in the lower right hand corner, there is a menu that says about. And in that menu, you have settings. So when you go to those settings, this is one thing I did find interesting. A lot of these server rack batteries, they have all these built-in settings and you can't necessarily adjust them. But when you look at this, it appears that you can change some of the operating uh, settings in here. You've got your max charge voltage, you've got your max charge temperature, you've got your minimum discharge voltage. There's several things in here, but at the very bottom, there is a selection called parallel mode. I'm assuming that means to parallel to batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And then there's two different modes, compatibility or exact. Well, these are the exact same battery. So I'm gonna choose that. I'm gonna pick the next battery and we're gonna turn on that parallel mode. So both of these still say one. I'm just gonna go ahead and reboot these. And then I'm gonna go ahead and power up the one that's talking to the inverter, I'm gonna power it up first, wait a couple seconds, and then I'll power up this second one. 
Well, now that I booted them back up, they still seem to not be communicating with each other because they still only see one battery. So it's a couple hours later now. I started playing around with the communication protocols from here to the inverter. Even though this said it was a 100% state of charge, a lot of these inverter protocols, they overlap a little bit on where they're trying to pull data from. And a lot of that 100, you know, the battery state of charge, a lot of those are identical. So you can, a lot of times you can have the wrong protocol and still get the battery state of charge. Just a lot of the other information is incorrect. Like the cell voltages, the temperatures, like that data won't line up. So I started playing around with it. I ended up changing this to RS-485 and I changed it to Pylon Tech and then I changed this to Pylon Tech on RS-485 and I know I have good communication between the two now. Now after I did that, I ended up and I just rebooted the bottom battery. I turned it off, left it off for about 20 seconds, turned it back on, and now it has appeared to address itself as number two and it seems to have the whole pack data. So we're looking at the top battery, the main battery. So when we look at pack, it does say address one, 100% state of charge, got the information, but now you can hit the arrow. And now it changes to pack number two and then it has the information for that. And I can hit the arrow again, and it goes back to number one. So that's all it sees. It sees two batteries, but they are communicating with each other. So now that I've got everything communicating correctly between the inverter and between the batteries, I've switched everything over, and we're now powering the entire shop uh, with this inverter and these batteries. So right now you can see we're pulling 42 amps, kicking on a heater now. Uh, oh wow, 148 amps. We're using some juice now. We're gonna max this thing out actually. The inverter is outputting 6,700 watts and it's supposed to be a 6,500 watt inverter. We're actually going over the normal output right now. I'm really surprised we didn't trip out the inverter there. So I turned the bottom battery off and we're just running this through the top battery and it's outputting 102 amps continuous. So this is like a max discharge test. This is supposed to be the maximum you're supposed to do is 100. But you can see we're continuously a little bit over that. So overall, I think these batteries did perform well. We just had a, a really kind of a glitch with the communication. Not sure exactly what fixed it. After I got this inverter communication where I knew it was 100% correct, um, I just ended up rebooting the bottom battery and everything started working between the two batteries. I don't know if it's related to getting the inverter communication correct or if it or if somehow it lined itself out when I rebooted it. I'm not 100% sure what fixed it, but other than that, everything on here seems to work the way it's supposed to. And this is rated for 6000 cycles, 80% depth of discharge. It comes with a 7-year warranty as long as you register it on their website. And for $699, now I know that is a sale price but it's a pretty good deal to get a server rack battery loaded with all the features most people are looking for. I don't think you'll find one with all these features at that price. And I don't know how long the sale's good for, uh, maybe till Christmas, maybe till New Year's. But uh, yeah, if you're looking to maybe get some batteries or maybe add some additional batteries, uh, if you're interested in this, I will leave a link down in the description below. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.